I want to believe that most of us here want to see the African continent of free trade area work, isn't it? Yes, so if we want to make it work, then this discussion should really make a lot of sense. We are going to start with uh, uh, Miss Delphine Traore, who is seated on my immediate right. And uh, uh, just briefly about her, she is the Chief Operations Officer of Alliance Africa. Now, what we should know about Alliance Africa is that it is an insurance and financial services provider with uh, many years of experience in the sector. And uh, just, she's a lady of uh, many achievements under her belt, and I want to, sh to let you know about her. In June this year, she was named the president of the African Insurance Organization. She was also designated as a key woman economic leader by the Forbes African Magazine 2019, among many other things. So I would like to start by asking you, Daphne, um, first of it all, welcome to the panel today. What are some of the major climate risks that you see for production and trade in Africa? Thank you, and thank you for having me. I'll, I'll start by saying, you know, Africa contributes less than 4% of uh, global um, emission or global greenhouse emission, but only 1% or sometimes uh, at most 2% of the financing for disaster, the disaster risk is directed to Africa. We know that a 1% increase in temperature has an impact of 2 to 4% on, on GDP growth in, in Africa in particular. So at this stage, I don't know how we uh, continue with sustainable trade. So at Alliance, we tend to do a survey every year. Um, uh, this is the eighth year now where we ask 2,000 business leaders and experts around the world in 80 countries, uh, most of them in Africa, what are the top risks at the top of their mind? Um, this year, cyber risk came as a top risk for us, um, for most businesses across Africa. Credit risk also came as a top risk because these two risks also have uh, an impact on trade. If you're not able to get uh, your account receivable paid, then it has an impact on trade. Um, if you get a cyber attack, then you have, uh, it has an impact on trade. But the most important risk um, that continues increasing in, um, uh, at the ranking, uh, number eight this year, is climate change. And the increase of, and the volatility of weather um, keeps increasing. So we at Alliance, we have a responsibility. Being the largest insurance company in the world, we have to do something. So for us, um, our responsibility include a low carbon economy. So which means what? First is net zero emission by 2050. We have specific goals that we are abiding by. Zero coal by 2040. Um, what zero coal means, we will no longer invest or insure coal related businesses. Um, the other uh, third part is 100% renewable um, by 2023, which is even closer. So we commit that we will continue investing. First, we will change our whole uh, business model to uh, move to green energy, but we will also invest and continue ensuring um, renewable energy project. So it's not just ensuring, but also investing in projects that are related to that. Um, we are also increasing our um, crop insurance um, uh, products across Africa to make sure that there is lower impact on climate related changes to agriculture across Africa. So those are key changes that we, we are doing and that we are um, supporting. The other part of the hat that I wear is uh, I'm on the board of what we call Africa Risk Capacity, which is an African Union specialized agency whose main role is to support countries and government um, manage the risk of climate related um, uh, changes. This by preparing them um, so that they can mitigate the impact, but also um, ensuring them um, throughout, uh, throughout the year. So when we look at it overall, there's a there's various vehicle that we have an insurance or financial institution um, to help support sustainable trade. Mm -hmm. So it's stop stopping to invest in, in coal, it's investing in renewable energy, um, but also supporting countries, government, businesses in mitigating risk. 
Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Ms. Traore. And you did mention a number of points that I want to believe. If you have any questions, note them down because at the end of the, of the, if, oh, at the end, we'll need you to ask, you know, and we'll also ask you, please do keep your questions short. Just ask, do not comment. Uh, we do want to now move on to a gentleman. I did speak to him earlier and he was telling me how I could tell the passion he has for uh, the green environment. He does own, uh, he's, he is the general manager of a very big um, tea factory. If you love tea in the room, then he's probably the man you should be talking to at the end of the session. So he is called uh, Mr. George Omoga. He is uh, the general manager in Gorongoro Tea Factory in Kenya and he has about 20 years experience in the tea industry and has unique expertise in sustainable climate, smart agriculture, among others. I do want to start by asking you, when we say sustainable climate, smart agriculture, what do we mean? <coughs> what we mean by cl sustainable climate, smart agriculture is that uh, we need to uh, come up with uh, climate mitigation measures or strategies that is able to make us remain in tea business in this generation and generations to come. That therefore means that we have to initiate and implement programs to our growers, tea growers in Kenya to ensure that tea is grown in a sustainable manner and tea is grown in a way that is able to weather the changing climatic trends. Thank you. Interesting. Interesting, uh, Mr. George. So we also talked earlier about some of the challenges that you faced within your company and you felt like you needed to move towards this direction. What inspired, what was that inspiration that pushed you to say, here's where I want to start from? Yes. Now, climate change is a reality that uh, we have to face head on. And because in Kenya, tea growing relies heavily on rain-fed agriculture. That means that we need to align our production strategies to ensure that we mitigate any form of climate uh, degradation. So the, some of the challenges we faced in the tea sector, specifically, there are quite a number of challenges, but I'll concentrate on, on just one major one, the high energy cost. We rely on the grid, the energy from the grid. And in tea business, we harvest a lot of trees. We grow a lot of eucalyptus trees in Kenya to, to be used to fire boilers for steam generation. And you see, when you want to conserve environment, you should ideally not cut down trees. Because for you to grow a tree at maturity, it requires an average of five to 10 years. We grow eucalyptus grandis, and after you have harvested, you also need to wait for five to 10 years for the trees to be mature. So we realize that by Continuously felling or cutting down trees is contributing to, to climate degradation. That is the reason why we went, went out of our way to look at green sources of energy. And that is how we, we, I managed to get one of the technology suppliers who is able to address that need of steam generation to curtail the wanton destruction of, of, of high value ecosystem in the country or destruction of forest. So we managed to partner with a company called uh, 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 Ab Absolicon that has a technology to generate steam from solar. Mm -hmm. They have something called parabolic um, solar, solar disks that is able to trap solar energy, concentrate it, and use it to heat water and convert water into steam that is, able, that, that is adequ adequately able to address our steam energy needs in the factory. Therefore, that means that installing this system will be able to stop or reduce the consumption of biomass, the consumption of wood fuel, and will be able to conserve our environment to ensure that we sustainably remain in tea business. Because trees help in rain circle. Mm. They perspire, they transpire, they generate moisture that is recirculated in terms of rainfall distribution. So for us to continue in tea business, we must have a reliable and well-distributed rainfall, which is currently not happening because of reduced forest cover out of trees that are cut and utilized in the factories by us. So we partnered with a, a company called Absolicon to install a system of solar steam concentrators or collectors to address that need. Thank you. 
Okay. Has it, how has it been going for you? Has it worked out perfectly for you? Do you believe it is as sustainable compared to the other methods you were using before? The solar steam generation is very sustainable because in Africa we are blessed by God. We have solar from January to December. Unfortunately, we have not had the technology to tap that free energy that is given by God to convert it into an economic use. That is what we have done because we don't need to grow the, 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 the solar energy. It is already provided for free. We only need the technology to tap, tap this energy and convert it into a form that is able to generate for us steam that is currently being generated by biomass or wood fuel. So wood fuel is not sustainable, solar energy for us, or solar steam generation is sustainable for us now and in the future. Uh, thank thank you. you so much. Um, I would want to ask you, but maybe Mr. Joachim will talk about it more. I would imagine in a country we do have, today you think it's going to rain, and it doesn't rain. Solar energy, I want to believe, it's, we use the sun. So what happens, actually, what happens when we are relying on solar energy and we don't have, um, we don't have the sun? What do we do then? I, I will start with that question, but allow me to introduce you, ladies and gentlemen. We'll now speak to Mr. Jo Joachim Bystrom, who is the, ex the chief executive office of Absolicon Solar Collector. Uh, what it does is that it develops, manufactures, and also supplies solar energy systems. Welcome. Thank you. And I've already spoken to a lot of you during the B2B session. Mm -hmm. And uh, the answer to the question about when the sun is not shining is that you keep your old boilers. And if it's raining, you burn some firewood. Mm -hmm. But today, to produce one ton of tea, you need five tons of firewood for one ton of tea. This is not really sustainable. And yeah. I think the tea factory is a, a good example where the energy cost is hindering the, the development. But I see that everywhere. I ask myself, why haven't Africa developed quicker? And I think one reason is you have three times higher energy cost than your competitor in Asia and in Europe. And this is totally unnecessary because on every square meter of land in Africa, you get the energy representing one barrel of oil, 160 liters of oil on each square meter. So if you just can harvest this energy, you can run all your processes to a very small cost. And today, when the multinationals are looking where to put their new factories, they are looking, of course, of the labor cost, but they are also looking on the energy cost. And if you are three times more expensive, the multinationals will not put their factories here. But you, if you can enable an environment where you get zero CO2 energy in Africa, the multinationals will flock here because they have promised to get zero CO2 by 2030, like H&M, for example. Mm. And you can be that because you have the sun in a total different way than China or Bangladesh. They don't have the sun like you have. But the challenge is that today you import all this equipment for renewable energy, and you need to start producing it yourself to get the cost down. So go home, start production of equipment that can produce renewable energy and run your factories on it and bring down the energy cost. Okay, what inspired you to partner with Mr. George? What was that key factor that you felt you could actually support him in helping his industries uh, become sustainable? Yes, we, we travel around in all kinds of industries that have high energy costs. Mm. And the tea industry is one example, and we are now establishing a production line for solar collectors in Kenya. So then it was very logical to approach tea industry in Kenya. But you can have another example. If you have jeans, to produce one pair of jeans today, you burn two kilos of coal. So we visited a textile factory in India where it burned 100,000 tons of coal every year. And they are the one H&M are buying from today, because coal is very cheap. But if H&M is going to have zero CO2, they can't have factories run on coal. They will be looking for factories that can provide zero CO2 in their production. And that, I hope, will be factories in Africa. Would you say solar energy is the way for African countries to have their different businesses uh, uh, keep in the business? Solar energy is the only energy source that can sustain mankind if we're going away from fossil fuel. Mm -hmm. Not only in Africa, also in Europe and in Asia, everyone is turning to solar. Yes, there will be some small wind power, there will be some small nuclear, mm -hmm. 
Mm. But solar is the only energy that we have enough of. Everything else is care. Okay, thank you so much. Um, we'll now try to speak to uh, someone who will probably be on the policy side, and uh, that is uh, Mr. Samba Thiam, who is the head of UN Environment Liaison Office to the African Union Commission. And uh, he is also the, the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa and also a representative in Ethiopia. Welcome. First and foremost, what is your perspective in regards to sustainable trade having environment included? Thank you very much. Um, good morning, or yeah, good morning to all participants. Um, I think I'm very happy to, to hear from the previous speakers that climate change is something that is real. Uh, it's no longer being uh, discussed or advocated by the uh, UNEP, but all the, uh, by all the actors. And it is something that is affecting all our lives, our societies, and it has impact on, on all our daily lives. So coming to this theme uh, on the trade, uh, climate change has um, numerous impacts on the, the whole chain of the trade. If, if you look at infrastructure, the weather, the weather extremes like the floods have far-reaching impact on the infrastructure, on the transport, on all, uh, all of those things. But the good news is that addressing climate change uh, through mitigation while promoting um, clean uh, technologies can also contribute to building resilience to building smart uh, infrastructure, to build, uh, to, 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 to build um, resilient infrastructures. And a study that UNEP has published early this year, in, uh, in March 2019, shows that the global trade in clean technology has increased by over 60% uh, from USD 0.9 trillion in 2006 to 1.4 trillion USD in 2016 which means that it is very important to engage and to invest on the clean energy. So if one looks at the environmental goods, our colleagues from Kenya were talking about tea, we talk about agriculture, we talk about any other national nat natural resource products, these are called environmental goods. So there, um, the, co the share of the environmental goods is projected to be valued by USD two to three trillions by 2020, I mean next year. The, the share of the environmental goods is important. So, but unfortunately, what we realize is the African countries, or many developing countries, mainly African countries, are not benefiting from these um, opportunities. Mm -hmm. So if we stick by our principle by leaving no one behind, it will be very important that we engage in policy reforms, in policy development that will enhance promoting sustainable trade uh, throughout the world. And I think, Fostering strategic partnerships, private sector, mm -hmm. government, civil society organization will enhance this kind of partnership. And if we want to go by that sustainability, because businessmen talk about profit, and if you talk about profit, you need also to lower your cost of the factor production. So investing in clean energy, clean and affordable energy, are key in terms of sustaining trade in Africa. One example that UNEP spearheaded over the last two years or three years is the Africa Renewable Energy Initiative that is aimed at supporting the SMEs in Africa to access to clean and affordable energy that is now running uh, and operational within the African Development Bank. I thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Samba. If you have any questions, please note them down. Not now, not now, but please note them down because we are just about to open the session for you to ask the different uh, questions to our panelists. Now, thank you so much, Ms. Cecile Bilau, for joining us on the panel this morning. We are glad to have you. And uh, she is the head of Sustainable Development Unit, and uh, she has... A over 10 years experience inside the European Commission, including at cabinet level, among many other things. We are glad to have you here, and mostly I would like to start by asking you, what are some of those policies you have in place that can help African countries uh, carry out trade, but as well as protect the environment? Thank you very much for that, and, and good morning, everybody. Uh, yes, that's uh, um, the big question. You know, in the EU, we, ha um, we have been very much uh, committed to sustainability, 
uh, and uh, climate is, is a key component of it. Sustainability is much broader, and we have this vision which is included both social, environmental, governance aspect to it, but climate is a very important component of it. We have those days in the EU, uh, the young generation going to streets, and saying to us, we want some more climate policy. I mean, I live in, in Brussels, in Belgium, and my daughter, she's taking part every week to some march for climate. So the topic there in, in the EU is, is there in the young generation, and we as policy makers, uh, we cannot ignore that, and we are really trying um, to put it at the forefront of the policy. That being said, that's not a new thing in the EU. We have started doing it I think 10, 12 years ago at that time I was working in the cabinet of Commissioner Edegard for climate change. So this was something which she pushed a lot. And it's not without difficulty because it means we have to mainstream climate in all the policy and, and trade policy being one of them and our development policy. But if we do that, we really have the tools uh, to, 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 to act and to, be, uh, to, to make the change. But it has to really be mainstream in many other policy. And to do that, and I was listening to where, what the different speakers were saying uh, it's important to make the business case for it, to make really the business case that you green investment for business is the way to go. I mean, you can choose a different path to invest, uh, but in the long term, it's, it's, not, it's not a successful path for you. So maybe in the beginning, this can mean using clean technology, uh, climate technology, which may be higher cost in the beginning, but in the longer term, you will get uh, most out of it because this is something that will make your business sustainable, uh, dec decrease your cost for energy because cost for energy is an important component when you invest. So all this makes sense for business and that's important as policy maker to sort of contribute to this. Now, to respond to your question, which you say, what, what do we do in trade policy? Uh, we have been doing a couple of things and we will try to do even more. Uh, we will have a new commission, a new European commission starting hopefully uh, next month and it has put our new president has put climate as a priority number one so we will have to even try to do more what i can say today what we have been working on is mainly two things first we facilitate the trade of environmental good and services because this is what we can do also as policy maker in different framework we've been working at multilateral level in the framework of the WTO on trying to lower the tariff and the barriers also to these goods. We are also working at a different uh, level, at bilateral level to do that. And we are also, by doing that, promoting um, climate-friendly technology in our um, development policy in our heads. Uh, the aid for trade uh, budget that we have to really uh, accompany um, uh, African country and other country, in development country, in supporting the infrastructure for trade and so on, which we have the biggest donor uh, as the EU and its member states of aid for trade. And we are mainstreaming more and more uh, sustainability and climate into, into these funds. A couple of exa examples which uh, um, are good to grasp what is going on. For example, here in this country, in Ethiopia, we've been funding a project called the Green Tanning Initiative, which is looking at the laser industry and sees and how we can use technology which are using less chemical, less environmental uh, impact, uh, tech, I mean, technology which are creating problems for the environment and trying to mainstream this technology into the way uh, the sector is using so that it is sustainable in the long term. That's something we've been financing. But we've been also financing projects for the infrastructure, for example, in Congo for the uh, Port Autonome de Pointe Noire. We've been looking uh, together with, with, uh, with the Congo government on how to make the infrastructure environmental friendly, uh, so also the building with infrastructure and, and the link with the further, um, further uh, delivery of the goods. So there are many examples which are trying also trying to promote uh, some uh, sort of uh, sustainable transport. So in Côte d'Ivoire, for example, we're financing uh, this gas, mini gas um, van for public transport, uh, which is friendly from the environment. So we're trying to, to, to mainstream that in our head. At the same time, we also use uh, the trade agreements that we have with uh, different countries in the world, not only African country, but everywhere else in the world, to really have uh, into our agreement some binding commitments uh, that we are going to monitor and implement the international standards, so all the convention on social, but also the Paris Agreement on climate, to monitor how it is done and, and, and use it as a platform to promote it. So I will stop here, yes. but uh, this is the main two, two actions we are taking at policy level.
Okay, thank you so much. From your discussion, I could say that you, you're concentrating a lot on ensuring that African countries have clean technology and also have infrastructure that is environmentally friendly. So we do thank you so much. I would want to turn to Mr. Mack. We would like to hear your thoughts on what you think should be done to create a conducive framework to address climate risk in production and trade. Um, I th thank you. I think uh, a lot of the speakers have, have uh, already uh, spoken about some of the some of the issues that need to be need to be addressed. I mean, just to to, to um, uh, reiterate some of the some of the the issues. I think that the the policies, first of all, need to be at least uh, uh, both policies and and government and uh, business um, business solutions need to be at least revenue neutral. They need to take advantage of, of uh, the advances in, in technology, um, and they need to also be job creating. But I think that the the the, the issues that have been been raised just by the by the last speaker in terms of uh, promoting trade in environmental goods and services by reducing uh, tariffs and non-tariff barriers, uh, and also uh, promoting uh, climate friendly. Uh, policies and climate-friendly technologies in in the development budgets is also uh, a, a useful issue to, to to address. Thank you. Okay, let us now. We will now open uh, to the audience. I can see many of you are excited to ask so many questions. So we do want. Let us see. I will start with the gentleman over there. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm, my name is Mr. Spai. Uh, I, I am from Ethiopia. Uh, I'm engaged in logistics business uh, for the last 20 plus years. Uh, I'm very much interested in, on the issue of uh, solar energy because uh, in Ethiopia, you know, a country of hundreds, 100 plus million population, the issue of, the issue of power is uh, really uh, point of major concern because uh, our energy requirement per annum, per, per annum is increasing by 20 plus percent per annum. So, uh, you know, uh, there is a huge gap of energy. Uh, for your information, maybe more than half of our uh, uh, total population has no electric power uh, of grid. Uh, so. Uh, Regarding the solar energy, uh, one of my major concerns is, uh, you know, uh, initial investment might be uh, a huge investment is required. Uh, so uh, how can we manage to, to re resolve such kind of uh, problems? The other thing, you know, can we expand it to scale it up to other business like for example in Ethiopia uh, cement factories are using coal energy to burn clinkers so can we uh, scale it up to other business like plastic factory uh, cement factory and others so uh, these are uh, one of uh, our major concern but I really I, I would like to appreciate my uh, the Kenyan gentleman for his courage and effort uh, to use uh, uh, clean energy and reduce the cutting of trees. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you so much. Your name again? Uh, your name again, please. Okay. That's fine. All right. Okay, good morning. Uh, I'm John Johannes from South Sudan. Uh, as Africans, we cannot bury our heads on the sun because the climate change issue is real. On the other side, the ornamental words will take us nowhere. Taking an uh, example from uh, panelists about the zero coal policy, how viable it is for Africa, given the fact that we don't have the technology and the know-how and the necessary resources of achieving that zero coal policy. In the other way, coming to farmers or green it could be green agriculture or sustainable agriculture. Given the fact that our farmers they are suffering from these climate change issues, particularly the flooding 
and drought. We know that a great part of East Africa is suffering from flood. So what is the opportunity that is given by the CFTA to our local farmers in terms of climate cautious? How can they know the impact of climate change, particularly on the predictability, how they can predict from the local aspect? So I will be really interesting to hear those answers. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. We're going to take two more, then we'll yeah. let our panelists answer them. Yeah. Uh, Thank I'll, I'll, I'm going Thank to you. leave the Thank lady you. behind. Please pass the microphone to the lady behind. Morning, my name is Leah. I'm from South Africa. We had an idea yesterday with, in the pitch, your idea, and the gentleman was from South Africa where he pitched an idea about using garbage and building processing units, avoiding dumping sites, and having byproducts from those garbage where you can make uh, bricks from plastic bags and lava and uh, manure and things like that. It sounds so easy and it's something that is workable. What is so difficult about implementing that in every country? Thank you so much. One Th more. Uh, Thank you, I have a micro. One, one good question, madame. Okay. Thank you, madame. Uh, je voudrais parler en français. Et, et nous, je suis de l'ambassade du Gabon. Et nous parlons, bien entendu, de euh, l'environnement, euh, développement durable. Nous parlons des investissements, les entreprises, aider les entreprises dans, un, dans le cas du changement climatique. Mais euh, je pense que nous oublions quelque chose. Parce que nos discussions à entendre euh, tout le monde, nous, discussions, nous, nous discutons euh, en, aval, en aval. Mais il y a un problème fondamental, les données climatiques. Et là-dessus, je voudrais m'intéresser à M. Samba et Madame de l'Union européenne. Et vous savez très bien qu'il y a un programme de l'Union africaine qui s'appelle GMS Africa, qui est un programme sur l'observation de la Terre. C'est un programme développé par l'Union africaine en collaboration avec l'Union européenne. Est-ce que ce programme est suffisamment euh, divulgué auprès des États Parce que c'est très important. La première conférence a eu lieu au Gabon, justement, de, ce, de, de, euh, de cette stratégie africaine. Et là, nous avons vu beaucoup, beaucoup d'intervenants, les universitaires, les développeurs de concepts, les, les entreprises qui euh, travaillent dans ce sens pour voir comment nous collectons les données euh, 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 what spatiales. Is, what, is, what exactly is your question? Just la make question, je dis même la question, la question est de savoir si ce programme est véritablement divulgué dans les États, parce que c'est très important de connaître ces données en amont, les traduire euh, en informations réelles pour permettre aux agriculteurs d'être résilients, madame. C'est de ça qu'il est question. C'est pour ça que j'insistais pour que euh, M. Samba Aruna, qui était d'ailleurs dans cette conférence, et Madame de l'Union européenne, nous répondent exactement. C'est très important, Madame, okay. de le savoir. Merci. Thank you so much for your question. Let us now have our panelists at least first respond to these, and if we have more time, we'll pick out some more questions. You want to say something briefly? Thank you. I understand in the African Continental Free Trade Agreement that there aren't provisions, there's not a recognition of environment in there. And yet in the room, we're hearing so many people expressing climate concerns. I would like to know um, from the people at the table, what can we do to bridge the worlds of trade and environment and put this higher in the agenda, first thing. And second thing, from the perspective of George, who is we want to see more people like George in this room, people who, in, who find it good business to put uh, climate in the heart of their production strategies. How can we get more people like you? How can we scale it up? Thank you. I think Mr. George, you're going to be the one to start by responding to her question. Mm. Now, the issue of climate change, especially when it comes to uh, climate resilient adaptation measures in agriculture. If we don't do it now, then we'll have to bear the pain in future. That is the reason why to us as a company, we have implemented quite a number of climate resilient adaptation measures to our farmers. 
including but not limited to the introduction of uh, drought tolerant, frost tolerant tea cultivars that can do well in case there is a reduction in the rainfall pattern or distribution. Because currently climate change has impacted the rainfall patterns in the tea growing areas. The rainfall patterns have become unpredictable. They're, they are poorly dis distributed. And this means that if we don't ca come up with those climate resilient measures now, we'll not be able to remain in su su sustainable tea business. And that means that the global tea trade will be affected. I mentioned that Kenya controls 27% of global tea trade. That means that if we are impacted because of failing to do something now, the whole global demand or clans that rely on Kenyan tea, they will definitely suffer. And this will negatively impact trade. So we better do something now. Now, we are building capacities of our farmers, and this should be done by all private agriculture stakeholders in Africa. Ensure that you build the capacity of your people to be conscious about the impact of climate change so that something is done now instead of waiting to sort out the problems when they're out of range in the future. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. George. I think for me, my concern would be, before we even wait for the government to put in place policies, before we even wait for the European Union to do something, what can each one of us in this room do to ensure that we have a better environment? And I would like to ask back, I, I mean, I'll send it back to you, George. Yes. What can a person like myself or like any other person in the room do when they go back home to ensure that they're at least doing something to protect the, uh, the climate? We have a responsibility, all of us, because when it comes to climate issues, it starts with you. You must be conscious about waste management. I had my sister from South Africa. There is currently a program that is dealing with the, with the circular ecology, a economy that is able to utilize, economically utilize the waste, convert the waste to money. As a person, you start from yourself, minimize the waste, then look at what you can do at a, as an individual to make sure that you, Im, I, you mitigate the impact of your activities to the environment. Address your activities first as an individual, go to your organization, institute something that is able to address the cl climatic uh, uh, impacts now so that we live to reap the benefits of, of these measures in the future. Uh, thank you so much. Um, Ms. Trawari wanted to contribute something briefly in regards to this. Uh, my, my answer goes to two of the questions um, on the Africa free trade, um, the environment, and also a question from a gentleman earlier who said, we're talking about zero coal, uh, and how can we do this in Africa? There's one point we have to remember. The G7 um, together have a certain responsibility to us here in Africa. The emission is coming from most of these countries. There's a, there's a responsibility to finance climate disaster and the challenges to our countries in Africa. So it's also our responsibility here in the room to take an opportunity and to take opportunities of what's being offered. What I've said earlier is a company like Allianz, it's our responsibility as a company in the G7 mm -hmm. with 130 billion uh, euros in revenue, we cannot sit quiet and watch Africa suffer. We have to do something. So when we say we are investing in renewable energy in Africa, we are investing, but we're not getting a lot of Africans coming to us asking for support. We're investing in projects, we're insuring projects, and we are supporting African countries or African companies move away from zero coal. So it's important to sit and say, we want to wait for government to do policies, we want to wait for this and that, but it's also important for us to go after the G7 and the companies in the G7 to see how they can support us in Africa. Okay, I think this is a good platform because like she said, they have the services they're willing to offer, but we are not asking for the help, isn't it? So it's about time that we went forward and looked for the solutions ourselves. Um, you are came, they, we had a number of people asking, having concerns about solar power. What do you have to say? Please respond yes. to the questions. I think when I went out to a small shop yesterday to buy food, the cookies 
were for, from Saudi Arabia, and the chocolate was from Turkey, because they have lower energy costs. So you need to invest, and I think this is the big challenge, because we're not talking about a few thousand dollars. We are talking about trillions of dollars to do those investments. Mm. And I'm not a policy guy, you know, I want to sell solar collectors, but today the Ethiopian government is subsidizing the electricity, and instead of doing that, they should try to find international capital and do large solar installations and reduce the electricity consumption. You know, I visited a large textile factory and they were using the electricity for heat, to heat their process, instead of using just the heat from the sun. And if we took those heating away from the electric grid, you would have more electricity to use for lamps and other small applications. And I would also say that when you are going to build, I, I'm sure that many of you here will build a large factory and start to mass produce cookies and chocolate. And when you do that, do it with zero CO2 and start selling to Europe and to those multinationals that have committed to zero CO2 because you will be the only one who can provide zero CO2 chocolate. I think their concern was African countries, some African countries do not have uh, the technology mm. to, to, uh, to use the services that you, you're saying are mm. good to use. How can we, where do we then start if we don't have the technology at the moment? Yes, do like the Chinese, go out, find it, copy it, start produce it. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. Well, I think there is also something, um, I think one of them mentioned about what opportunities are available for the local farmers to access those services. How do they get these services? I think the local farmers aren't really my cup of tea. Um, I think those policies will be implemented by the multinationals and the big companies first, because they are the ones who have access to the cheap capital. Mm. And capital will be the key here. If we can provide capital in other ways, then maybe the small farmers also can benefit. But okay. I think this development will be pulled by the big companies. Okay, thank you so much. We'll now move to Mr. Nsamba. You needed to respond to a, quest a question from the, from the other gentleman. Yeah, before I do that, I want to, to start where uh, the previous speaker started, uh, left it off. I think um, the local farmers should be our cup of tea. Um, given the importance of environmental goods, especially in this continent called Africa, uh, the local farmers, tea, and the experience from uh, my friend from Kenya, from Kiambu, where I know very well, um, the, the cocoa producers in Ghana or in Cote d'Ivoire, I think the local farmers should be our, our cup of tea. Because um, they are produced in Kenya, but they are enjoyed in England or in France or in, in, in Belgium. So, I mean, it comes from the local farmers, and then in the principle of leaving no one behind, we have to make sure that we bring them in the process. And we make sure that when we talk about sustainability, we talk about the justice and fairness in terms of the way we address the climate change impact. Now, having said that, I wanted to, to come back to the question uh, raised by my friend from Gabon uh, about the GMS um, uh, program. Uh, I think this is a very good uh, program. Um, it, it, it entails uh, earth observation um, uh, and data collection. I think data is very important as far as policy development is, in, is, in, is involved. And I think this program is very important and needs to be rooted and outreach to the countries. And I've, I was in Gabon for the first, um, uh, the, the launching of this program. I believe, and UNEP is part of this process with, together with Africa, uh, with European Union in support to the um, African Union, I believe that this is a program that we, we need to, to, to engage on. Um, now, coming to the CFTA and um, to the question about uh, we don't have technologies. I think we have technologies in Africa. I think this is a part, we need to, to change the narrative about Africa. Um, there are a lot of startups today in Africa that are engaged on the developing the new technologies. They need to be enhanced. We need to develop conducive uh, policies and frameworks so that these incubators develop and grow and come up with that. And we need also to piggyback on the, the decrease of the cost of the technologies. We cannot continue relying on technology transfer. Nobody will, not, nobody will develop the trans technology for you for free. You need to invest on research and development. And um, the second point is on the CFTAs. And I come back again to the, to the goods. I think we need to make sure that we integrate comprehensive sustainability assessment into the new trade to see that how they take into consideration 
the environmental goods that are so crucial for the African farmers, for the African producers at the local level. I thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I'm now going to give uh, one minute to each one of you to just give us recommendations to any business that wants to go green. For those that I know there's so many that would like to ask questions, you can please approach them after, but we are running out of time. I want to start uh, from my left. What are some of the recommendations that you would give businesses that would love to go green? I think that this free trade agreement will be very important because you need big scale production of this equipment from renewable energy. And when you do this huge investment in a robotized factory that mass produce renewable equipment like windmills or solar panels or solar collectors, you will be able to export it to all of Africa. And I think this has been a problem in the past that no one had done this investment because the market has been too small. But I also think that really when you are building a new factory, make it zero CO2 because that is the future. And I will hold a seminar in briefing room four at 12.30 that is only about solar energy. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, over to you, Mr. George. Yes, my recommendation is that uh, to private agriculture stakeholders, I appeal to you to start looking at uh, implementing what you call sustainable agricultural programs in your production that is conscious in terms of climate mitigation to ensure that agriculture is not adversely affected in Africa. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'll go to my far right, uh, Miss Cecile. What are your last recommendations for the different people in this room that would want to go green? Thank you. I think from a policy a point of view, I think, and that was a question also answer on the building of the ACFTA. As a discussion, we really start on investment, which is an important area for discussion. Then this dimension should really be taken into account uh, and see how then from also from the government and the structure, the broader structure, policy structure, <coughs> we also have uh, the support promoting uh, green technology because then it's the role also of the policy maker to, to sort of um, induce that uh, and, and see that it's send a strong message that's important for business to invest in that. So I would, I would say that. So when you look at investment, really look also at the investment in a s sustainable way, both social but environment and climate aspect, very important. At least that's what in the EU we are very keen to, to push for. Okay, over to you, Mr. Samba. Thank you very much. I think um, one key message is that um, climate change here is real, yeah. but addressing climate change can contribute to building resilience and sustainability. That's one. Second, it cannot be um, addressed by one actor. It requires str fostering strategic partnership. Governments, private sector, civil society organization, academia, name them all. It's collective and strategic partnership. And the last one, and it's very important, is to ensure that countries develop and implement green economy strategies while promoting clean and affordable energies to ease or to decrease the, uh, the production factors. Okay, thank you. Thank you. The cost. And then over to you. We talk a lot about trade um, and sustainability of trade, but the impact of climate change is real. Um, unless we are able to mitigate and manage the, the, the impact of climate change, then there will be no trade to talk about free trade. Um, so I think it's important that we um, manage this situation quite early, use the opportunities that are available globally. Um, Africa is suffering. The rest of the world um, is mainly uh, contributing to the CO2 emission. So we need to get support from the rest of the world to support us here in Africa. Okay. Thank you so much. We'll now, I will now invite uh, Mr. Mack to give us his uh, closing uh, remarks as he also gives us recommendations on how businesses can go green. Uh, thank you. Um, I think most of the questions have, 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 been, have been addressed, so let me just uh, start with a, with a summing up, really. I think that there was a, a gentleman called Robert Swan who was an explorer and an adventurer and an environmentalist who uh, once said that the greatest threat to the planet is the belief that someone else will save it. So the, um, I think from, from the, the panel here, we've, we've seen that there are 
a lot of things that are that are taking place, and people are holding their hand up and, and saying that uh, they that they're, they're going to, to do something. From Allianz, I think that. Uh, the, the message we get is, is that uh, they are moving away from investing in non-renewables and uh, trying to, to, to make sure that they invest in, in renewables um, and by, by, by promoting renewables, promoting sustainable trade uh, as, as well. Um, from um, from the, uh, um, the, the, the issue on, on um, uh, the tea and uh, uh, Absolicon. Abso Absolicon. Absolicon. Absolicon, thank you. Um, we, we have um, uh, access to, to advanced technology which can be used. I think that uh, the question about uh, can, we, can we remove ourselves from coal is more about uh, our willingness to, to do that rather than about our access to, to technology. We, we have the technology, I think Absolicon has already said, we have the technology which, which, which can be used. So it's really about um, how you create sustainable climate businesses that allow people like, uh, like George to stay in the tea business, I think he said, for generations to come. Uh, if he sticks with, uh, with, with non-renewable and, and non-sustainable and uh, non-sustainable trade issues, he, his, his children will not be growing tea in, in, in the same place. Um, so really to, to, to move away and move from, from biofuels and the creation of greenhouse gases into more sustainable um, energy systems. Okay. Uh, the policy reforms that are being promoted by UNEP, uh, looking at uh, through PPPs to uh, build reliance using clean energy, I think are a, are, are a very interesting program and also the, the uh, the promoting of, of trade in environmental goods and services by the EU using um, technology solutions, lower tariffs and NTBs, and promoting technology are also going to help us and help Africa to, to uh, advance on sustainable trade. And lastly, in terms of the answering the last question about how we can build environment into the AFT, CFTA, I think that uh, we need to understand that uh, a free trade agreement is only a free trade agreement. We're not going to solve the world with a free trade agreement. But within that free trade agreement, we can build in sustainable uh, trade systems. For example, looking at uh, policies and investments which promote sustainable trade. If you're going to reduce tariffs on, on technology uh, which is going to, to promote uh, sustainable trade, then that's what we should do. We should remove non-tariff barriers from, from uh, technology solutions that, 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 that will promote sustainable trade. Uh, so basically, just to um, try and uh, promote policies which, in the same time, promote sustainable trade, but also take, a, take cognizance of the fact that they need to be revenue neutral, they need to create jobs, and they need to advance technology. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Mack, for your closing remarks and also giving us your recommendations. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll join me in giving them a round of applause. I also want to, in a special way, thank you for joining us in this session and I want to believe because our intention was to make sure that we explore the risks for business and trade, the new opportunities and also see the supportive policies that we have for a better Africa. So I want to thank you so much our panelists today for joining us and for sharing with us your insights. I want to believe that we have picked one or two from this discussion and of course if you have more queries, if you want to understand more things, uh, you could join us here, we're still here, so you can have uh, the response to your questions. Once again, I want to thank you, but for me, I would say that we shouldn't do a lot of just talking, we should do a lot of action. We should go back home and put in place uh, strategies at our own individual basis to ensure that we have a greener planet, we have a healthy environment. For me, I believe that change starts with me. I never wait for someone to start helping me. I believe you have to start helping yourself before someone else comes through to help you, isn't it? So ladies and gentlemen, be the change you want, create the future you want. Thank you for joining us today. <laughs>